Praise the Lord. Thank you for the beautiful worship. Today my subject is Trust the Lord to do what he has promised. The whole nation is under sedation. There is a numbness in the whole system. There is a slumber. Those children should have full of life and ever alert, always in the battlefield, fully armed to fight. Jesus himself have told in John chapter 5 verse 17, my father is always at work to this very day and I too, I am working. He has shown us an example. Why I am telling you this, last few years, if you look at any, any information or news item or TV or discuss with anyone, everything that is coming are these bad news. There is no good news at all, absolutely no good news. So are we going to live the rest of our life or are the coming few years the same way we are living each day now? Or we have a separate inheritance because we believe in another God who is capable of doing what he has promised. Don't listen to what the world is telling you today. The world is shouting you all the negative things. And all the news is bad news. So trust the Lord to do what he has promised. John chapter 10, 10, Jesus himself has said it. The thief comes only to steal, only to steal one item, and then kill and destroy. See, his agenda is perfect. That is what is happening today in this world situation. He is having a field day now. All that thing which is said by Jesus, he is being fulfilled in the worldly situation today. But are we going to live as part of that worldly system? We are in this world, but not of the world. So we look to Jesus to fulfill that promise. We trust in him to fulfill because his word has the power to accomplish what it has promised. So Jesus is telling us, assuring us, guaranteeing us, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So what a big contradiction what we see. The economy, what you see today, many of them are predicting the, the worst year after independence. After independence, we never had a bad year like the thing we are passing through. I am not going into details. I am not going to see the negative things or the fearful things. In this situation where we are, in the valley of darkness when we stand, we look at Jesus to give us a solution to the problem because his word has the power to produce after his kind. The word is more than sufficient to take us across through these difficulties to the promised land, which step by step I am going to teach you how to enter into that promise, different from the world situation we are living in. In this situation itself, God has given us an ample example. In the case of Israel, when Egypt was all in trouble, Israel, uh, Israel where Washington had everything. I have explained to you before all those things. I am not going to, into those details. But God has every time separated his people to his blessing. Psalm 25 verse 12, a psalm of David. When a man fears the Lord, he shows him the way he should choose. Boys, he asks for divine guidance every day, every day. Before you make a small decision, big decision, whatever may be the decision, small, big, ask for divine guidance. He will show the way. David was doing it and successfully finished it. Today, we are, we are, many of us are doing it 
and God has blessed us. In this situation also, God, God is blessing us and guiding us and leading us through all these difficult challenges and uh, uh, challenging times. He abides in prosperity. Who abides in prosperity? The people who consult God. He for divine wisdom, divine revelation, divine guidance. About that, those people, David is writing. He abides in prosperity and his descendants inherit the land. Not only the promise is for you, every promise of God is for generation. Because from creation to revelation, it is before God. God is not concerned about one generation. When he called Abraham, generations he blessed. He is the same God he wanted to bless the generations. Thousand generations, uh, seven generations, every, so many times, wherever the Bible we see and study, we can see the generational things happening. Good things we do, generation will be blessed. Bad things we do, generation will be cursed. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. This is the key. It is not five minutes uh, praying. It is not 10 minutes praying, waiting on the Lord. Psalm 91 tells us those who dwell. That means our day starts with God, end with God, and every moment we spend with God in close fellowship with him. That does not mean that all the time we are praying. It is the relationship knowing fully well that he is with us. He is guiding. The Spirit is in us. That dependence on God for divine guidance. And then what he will do? Isaiah predicting, which Paul has again in the two Corinthians, he has written about it. Since ancient times, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. See, there is an understanding level for us now. Because of the things what we see, we are willing to compromise. But that is not the inheritance of compromising. It's the inheritance of claiming and entering. There is a big difference. God, children, they need not compromise. We have an inheritance which we can claim and move. And then what happened? No eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who, who wait for him. We are all waiting. We, our dependence only is total and complete. Without him, nothing is possible. With, everything, with, with him, everything is possible. Let us move into that possibility of totally and completely depending on him, telling him, without you, nothing is possible, Lord. Our dependence on you is total and complete. If you say yes or no, we need you, Lord. How, how we have to take the steps? The God is telling. Don't look at the situation and get into fear. Whenever God has called his people, he told every one of them, Bible right through. What? Don't look at yourself, your limiting factors. I am coming, I am giving my spirit and you will be able to perform <laughs> supernaturally because I am dwelling in you. I am going to be guiding you when he called Joshua because he has to perform what Moses could not perform, taking God's people into the promised land. So again, he is giving him all the assurances because you have been given a responsibility. God has given each one a responsibility to spread his kingdom. So he will enable, don't look at your limiting limitations and limiting factors. Look at God who has promised. He has always used the weak to surmount the strong. So we are weak people, then we know in God we will be strengthened. Be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people into inherit, inherit the land. I swear to their forefathers to give them. See, God has come to establish, every time I tell, God has come to establish a kingdom, an unfinished work of Calvary. We have been like Joshua. We, each one of us is called 
to continue with that work, take the people into the kingdom experience, then people to inherit the land. Today, the kingdom experience is the land which God has promised. Each one of you is a Joshua. To the calling is to each one of you. you. When you listen to that calling, don't look at your limiting factors or limitations. God will enable you to may make it possible because it is his calling, it is his infilling, it is his Holy power that, will be, that you will be able to do it. Be strong and very courageous. See how the word, how God was speaking to him directly and telling him, be strong and very courageous. Have I not commanded you? Again and again he's telling, this word you put instead of Joshua, you put your name. And then I say, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified, terrified at the situation what we see. There is only, only fear is putting. We have no answer, no government has answer, no one in this world has an answer, but the, world, the one who created this world, his name is Jesus, he has an answer and he is telling us, don't be terrified, do not be discouraged, see the discouragement. Well, now what we can do? Everybody is telling what we can do. That is why I said we are under sedation. Don't look at the limiting factors. Look at the circumstances you are living in. Because to the promised land we are entering. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He is the guiding factor. He is in you. You are in him. And he will guide, lead you to the promised land which is his promise. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 20. Then Moses said to them, You have reached the hill country of Amorites, which the Lord, uh, our God, is giving us. See, see, see the Lord, your God, has given you the land. See, see each, the Bible, each word has a meaning. <laughs> each word. Go through it when you go home and ask the Spirit to enlighten you and give you that wisdom to understand it. How he has put it, which the Lord our God is giving us. He is telling it, he is going to give us. Okay, that is going to be in the future. But next sentence, see the Lord your God has given you the land. See, when you believe that this is my land, this is my promise, this is the my God who has promised, then immediately at that moment, it is not a future, it is the present. You enter into it. Understand the difference. God's promises are for the future, but when you believe, it becomes a present factor for you. Understand and ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you with the revelation knowledge and the wisdom to understand His loving provision for us, for the God's chosen people for this time of trouble. Go up and take possession of it as the Lord has. Go as the Lord, the God of your father told you. See, the thing is, take possession. It is already yours. Today, the promise I am telling you, the God is opening new ways for God's people in prayer, in consultation, in meditation, in asking the Lord. See, Lord, the way I was walking is closed now. So open a new way and a better way. God will definitely guide you in the correct path. God will take you. Already a prayer, new way is been opened out for God's people. Only believe, trust, ask for guidance, take and move into that direction. See, don't, don't lie sleeping. When the situation comes, when every lockout is removed, when everything is in favor and a new government comes, situation changes, banks start giving money, then I will start something. No. In this situation where we are now, as we see, move. Don't sleep. Don't be a slumber. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Again, he's telling. Do not be afraid. Don't see the fear factor. What is in your, in your kitty? This is not the thing. It is God's abundant provision, which I read out to you, Jesus promised, for God's people. So that word is there. He has used that word. I have taken this particular uh, from the best of the best translation by the holy phrase in the beginning of the Bible, one of the first Bible translations, where I wanted to know what word they exactly they are used. I got a copy of that. 
the first bible uh, and there they have used the word abundance so there is no ambiguity there is no doubt because those holy fathers by the revelation of the holy spirit of god in holiness and prayer in a group of people in prayer <coughs> has taken that bible and i am using that bible for references now 1 samuel verse 30 verse 3 the david and his men came to siklag they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive so david and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep see this is the position of many people many people many many calls i am getting people are losing job right and left they simply do not know what to do next month emis all the problems all the education of the children million things the evil one will put before so david was in that stage at that time she allowed until they had no strength left to weep david's two wives had been captured david was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him see the situation he has lost everything of his some of the companions who is whom he was depending on wanted to stone and kill him what is that stage he was going through we are all far anybody in this world today is far far better than david was at that point but what was his solution he was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters but david found strength in the lord his god the unshaking power of god the rock of believers jesus he is our strength don't look at situation you don't look at friends don't look at government no don't look at anything else look to jesus he is the rock he is the rock he will never shake you depend on him to take you across through the all the difficult times he is the best companion you have he is the best guide you can have he is the best god you can have he will never fail you you will never fail you he is there for you all the time when good times bad times many of many of this world situation only good times people are with us the worst of the worst time jesus is there with you all the time all the time that is why the bible tells us even in the valley of darkness he is there with you the worst of the worst situation he is there with you extraordinary times needs extraordinary decision see sometimes god may guide you to something which is so extraordinary so again and again you consult the lord is it you are speaking or the devil is speaking or the world is speaking if god is speaking then he it will be accomplished i am giving you an example genesis chapter 6 verse 9 noah was a righteous man blameless among the people of his time and he walked with god one thing i am telling you there is no magic about it no face mask with god he is the one who looking at your heart he knows your heart are you going for only pittance which he can give or as a child of god moving into the kingdom experience of blessing and abundance what is your relationship with god are you looking at his hand what is there by what i can get from him or having a relationship sitting at his lap and enjoying as a child of god which one you want make a decision today don't play with games with god we have played enough that is why the today the world is paying that price we have challenged him enough today the world has no answer to the problems we are facing we are so helpless 
Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become. For all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. There is no difference. As if he is seeing now and writing. You know the thing which is happening. You know the things which is happening. Nowadays I am getting calls from youngsters who have been trapped into pornography. The brain is working, they are going to psychiatry, there is no solution. Yes. There are people invited the evil one to come into their life and they are being destroyed. I am telling you on bended knees with tears in my eyes. Don't do it, don't do it, it will destroy you. It's a stronghold so you will never be able to break. It will eat you and destroy you, I am telling you. Today I am guiding, guiding, I am, sometimes they go on hanging on to me, so five calls, ten calls, what I can do? Because they simply do not know. When the enemy comes in, he pounces on you like a lion, tear you out. He will wait, he will wait till he, on the wings. But once you are trapped, there is no way out. It's a stronghold. It's a destroyer. He will see to it that you are destroyed. Because today is the time many of us are spending all the time before the Holy God in prayer. There are others who are spending their time in fun. And he is a lion. He has no mercy. He will come, pounce you, tear you out, and destroy you. Youngsters are losing job. They cannot think. They cannot act. They are going into psychiatric because they my mind is blank. No man's publish every month these details that don't get into this trap. It is a psychological problem which can be re not removed. Anyway, that is not my subject today. But when I see these things, I, my heart cry. How long are we going to challenge the God? How long? And we pay the price. And heavy price. Heavy, very heavy price. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of, because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. See, when God, this may not be the true thing, which is the true thing, but God will allow, allow, we wait, 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 wait. But the power of evil controls you, he is a destroyer. He, when he, God is not in your life, the destroyer will bounce on you and eat you and destroy you. God is not destroying, but the evil one will destroy you because God's protection is not there. For us, people who are walking in the before the Lord, angels of the Lord are always there. He will never allow, not even a hair to be touched by the power of darkness. The wrath of God will burn out such forces of darkness, both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with with inside and outside. See, when there was no rain, no one has seen a boat because there was no rain. No one has seen water at that time because there was, he was, a God is asking, the sea was far away. The God is asking him to make a, a, a boat. He simply followed. How the boat is going to be in the sea? When there is no rain at that time, he trusted the Lord. You, you have asked me to make, I am making. And it took so many years. But what happened? All the others were going and fooling him. What idiot? What are you doing? But one day, he was laughing. All the others were crying. So he, when, when we withdraw from the world, which is under the power of darkness, to a lonely place to be in his presence, we will be rejoicing. Because there is no if in our life, it is yes and no. And we know who is in charge of our life, our God who created the entire universe. He, the whole world, the whole heaven will move to protect God's people. We are not alone. Not a, not a single believer is alone. And no one who has trusted Jesus is alone. His angels are there. His Emmanuel presence is with us. He will never allow. Psalm 91, everybody knows. I will establish my covenant with you and you, and will enter and you will enter the ark. 
See, the thing is, he is making an ark for us, not in that physical form we, which Noha is uh, given to Noha, but each one of us is an ark, which is not seen by anybody else. But go when we are consulting the Lord, when we are praying for God's guidance to lead us in this difficult time to the passage which he has prepared, he will, he is doing it. That is what we call the ark of, for any believer. Now, who you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you? Noah did everything just as God has commanded him. Lord, Lord then said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. See the thing, see the thing. Why <clears throat> these are all absolute truth, historical fact. God has moved, God has blessed Noah and the new generation of the world has come through Noah. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. This is the thing. See, when God gives you that small whispering noise, as Elijah heard in that wind. That small whispering is always, the devil is always loud. God may will whisper to you. When we follow that whispering, according to God's plan and purpose, and according to his command, then everything will go well for you. Genesis chapter 26 verse 11. Now there was a famine in the land beside the earlier famine. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will be bless you. See, see where sometimes we feel that we have to quit this country to live well. But it is not that. Where you are, God is telling. When uh, Peter and his friends were fishing the whole night. They could not get any fish. When Jesus came to the shore, what happened? The same place, same, net, same boat, full of fish. The same thing. Everybody was quitting. And he also wanted to go to Egypt because they, there was no rain, there was a famine, and all the calamities in that place. But then what happened? God said, don't go. When I am there, I, I will bless you in this place. Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year reaped a hundredfold. When others were looking for the rain and the, and the water and all the things, God told him, you saw now and, uh, and I am going to multiply. In that season, when there, nobody else has any hope, where everybody was sitting idle and looking, looking for an opportune time, God told Isaac to sow and he, he reaped hundredfold. This is why I am telling you, this may be a difficult time when the Lord is telling you to take start a new thing, a new guidance or a old thing, whatever it is, how the God is guiding each one will be different. But trust the Lord to guide you without consultation. Don't do anything because the Lord blessed him, because the Lord blessed him. See, if we are walking in the righteousness, if we have fellowship with God, <laughs> then we are into that blessed group. Why doubt? Why doubt? If doubt is coming, there is something somewhere, there is a disconnection. The wire is somewhere broken. Reconnect it with God. And you will see miracles happening, supernatural favor moving in. All your prayers are answered. See now, <clears throat> apart from this, see you all know somebody in our prayer group. She was coming, she is a Hindu coming to our prayer meeting mainly for the, her job problem. And she had asthma. Now only I came to know. She was, she was admitted in the hospital, she died. After the death only they called me and told this has happened. I am telling you, I am requesting all of you, you know everybody. I am praying for literally, literally a big number every day, early morning till late into the night. And no, by the grace of God, God is protecting each and every one of us. New cases every day, people are coming out, thanking the Lord for everything. But one thing, asthma in our group, not a single person is suffering from asthma. If one prayer would have removed that asthma from her. I am not going into details, but for the people who are living. 
people who are connected with us. Only one thing I am asking. A, a phone call away, we are there for you to help you out. You see, maybe we may be tired. We may be, a, sometimes we find it so difficult to take the challenges right through. Oh, one after another, one after another, one after another. We are on the phone for hours together sometimes. But one thing I can tell you, but every prayer, God knows our heart. Every prayer we want God to answer. And God always satisfy us with answering that prayer, fulfilling that need, whatever that need we are putting in. Yesterday I was praying for an young priest who had ordained just three months before, suffering from cancer, being operated today in St. John's. You see the plight of it. Like that, youngsters, I am not going into, this is not my talk, but I am just giving you, but one thing I know, God will intervene. God will supernaturally heal, supernaturally do miracles. It is a question of five minutes prayer. Do not be complacent, <clears throat> Sephanos, chapter 1, verse 12. At that time, <clears throat> I will serve Jerusalem with lambs. I pursue those who are complacent. Their wealth will be planted, their houses demo demolished. They will build houses but not live in them. They will plant vineyard but not drink the wine. This is no, I am just telling you the other side. This is not for us. This is not for us at all, I am telling you. This is not for us at all. But for the knowledge purpose only, I have brought a few things. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32. For the way, the way, way wander, wanderness of the simple, the way wanderness of the simple will kill them and the complacency of the fools will destroy them. But whoever listen to me will live in safety and be at peace without fear of harm. Amos chapter 6. Hope to you who are complacent in Zion and you who feel secure on Mount Samaria. See, see, don't be complacent. We may be secure, don't be complacent. This is the time, everything may be going fine. That is the time you get more time to spend that time with the Lord. This free time should not be wasted away. Simply wasting. So spend the time with the Lord. Do not be lazy. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. I read out to you in the beginning itself. Our God is working all the time. Jesus is working all the time. I, at the age of 85, I am working all the time. I am, whatever I have shown in my life, now I am consolidating. That means I am overworked now. Overworked now. Not even a single moment. Single moment I waste now. From early morning till late, late into the night. Either prayer or running, consolidating all the things which I have done. Because I have so soared into many areas. Now it's a time of harvest. I am praying to the Lord to help me to consolidate and take the harvest now. And our good to God is blessing me with the directions and help and support. Ecclesiastical chapter 10 verse 18. If a man is lazy, he is wrapped in sack. If his hands are idle, the house leaks. Reality bites. See now, the I am not criticizing the government, but nothing to say good about them. See the whole the things what they are telling. The reality is something totally, completely different. Completely different. The reality is totally incomplete. Don't fool by all those things what you hear. The Bible tells us the futility of their thinking. Their manipulation will not work. Reality will bite. I am not going to details, but you all know. Reality is something totally and completely different. They are darkened in their understanding. <clears throat> they simply do not know it is hurting their own people. But it is hurting. It is really hurting. It is really hurting. And they have no solutions. 
Wake up for your slumber. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 6 verse 9. How long will you lie there? You slug guards. When will you get up from your sleep? This is one of the major problem I see today because of this problem we are going into. 10 o'clock people don't get up. What to do? Nothing. Government has to declare permanent holiday in India. Directly or indirectly. No job, no, no security. No, everything is uncertain. So the best way is to sleep and spend the time. That is not the way. That is the time we have to be alert. Early morning. Every early morning you go should hear your voice. Everyone should be familiar with your voice every morning. Start the day with prayer and spend at least an hour. Minimum an hour. I am telling you minimum. Bare minimum. One hour. Adjust your timings. And then you spend the time with the Lord in, in communion with the Lord. Then rest of the day he will take you in his palm, guiding you in the correct way. There won't be any hurdles. There, is, there won't be any, any misfortune. There won't be any bad news. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and the poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Ask for God's guidance and wisdom. <clears throat> See, one thing I always I liked, Peter, who was an ordinary fisherman, but the spirit of uh, enlightenment has given to him. And he wrote so beautifully to Peter chapter 1 verse 3. His divine power uh, has given us everything we need. Go through it quietly. Reflect on those words and promises. His divine power has given us everything. Everything. His divine power. God's power has given us not something. Here and there. Everything. We need for life. We need for life. He knows. Jesus himself told. Seek the first kingdom every day. There so many stories. He is repeating that in a day. Because of his personal experience. We need, need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him. Our knowledge, how we get the knowledge? Through the Word of God. In communion with Him. Asking the Holy Spirit to teach you. And then He will take you to a different level of communion. Each word become alive in your life. Each word become a life factor in your life. You start believing. You start trusting. You start depending. Who called by his own glory and goodness, by his own glory and goodness. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. See, your priorities will be set right. What is shadow? Don't go after the shadow. Many things in the world is unnecessary, don't require at all. Don't go after the worldly system and the worldly, what the world is inviting you. What is tangible, what is lasting, what is permanent, what is eternal, go after it. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, and good. see how he is adding up, adding up. More, do more things I wanted him to add, but it is not there. So I am not taking it. But to just see what, what one thing, when I was preparing, the Lord showed me, when you follow this much, all the other things will be added unto you. So, so we will take that and proceed. And do goodness, knowledge, and knowledge, self-control. Even today I read new books. I collect new, new knowledge because connected with my ministry. See, when somebody is calling me, some special sicknesses they call, I make a study on what the Bible is telling, whether it is coming from the natural or from the supernatural, from the devil, or generational cases. I, can, I try to make an analysis of these things to understand to, so that I can help those people to come out, out of their problem. See, knowledge, no, self-control, to self-control, perseverance. This is also important. Perseverance. It's very important. It's a very big, great quality one has to 
don't when you, nobody will succeed in the one attempt second attempt but anybody who pursues even jesus given us ample example about the judge and all that thing anybody who pursues it and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love <clears throat> see if we are not reaching out to people it will be stagnant water it will pollute see boy automatically when the nature of christ is in you you love you simply love not because you expect something from them not at all your god is the rewarder you love because the nature of christ is in you through the spirit of god you can only love can come from your heart love encouraging words can come from your mouth for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive see this is very important at this stage i want to be productive till my last breath i want to be productive <clears throat> because i don't want people to look after me and i am helpless and uh, in that situation till the last breath i want to be productive and active and uh, in prayer ask for wisdom solomon prayed to chronicles chapter <clears throat> chapter 1 verse 10 give me wisdom and knowledge that i may lead this people or who is able to govern this great people of yours see he asked for wisdom to govern his people and god gave all the other wealth because he asked only for or that wisdom but today also we have to ask for wisdom that is why i told in in prayer ask for god guided god's wisdom god's wisdom is totally different from uh, man's wisdom man's wisdom always have a limiting factor god's wisdom has no limiting factor because god wisdom is god himself so we so ask for that wisdom that god gives you which will be far above human wisdom which has a limiting factor david prayed psalm 51 verse 6 you teach me wisdom in the innermost place james asked us to pray for wisdom james chapter 1 verse 5 if any of you lacks wisdom you should ask for who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him Proverbs chapter one verse six. For the Lord gives wisdom. Ephesians, God gives you wisdom. Ask for wisdom, and God is the one giving you wisdom. That means God Himself as wisdom will come and guide you. The Spirit of God will enable you with a supernatural revelation, supernatural guidance, and all that is required in the situation. Ephesians chapter one verse seventeen. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father may give you the spirit give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation give you the spirit of wisdom this the that means god himself is the wisdom and the spirit is giving you that wisdom and uh, and uh, along with that revelation also will come it is beautiful i am telling you beautiful whenever people call us to pray we see this answer comes like that the most critical time i was praying for somebody who is 85 wife 80 and uh, god gave me very critical but god gave me an assurance that both of them will be out of the hospital thank god god has done it so what happened when we pray also when they, the family is in a crisis we were able to stand before them stand holding an hand giving a prophecy through the word of god to the revelation telling that both of them will be out of danger it's beautiful to help people to be able to help people no anything is not for us it is all those things for others like a fruit nobody is no tree will eat the fruit it is food is for others like that all these gifts god is giving us healing gift not for others we can also get healed but at the same time these gifts are given for others fear should not stop you john chapter 14 verse 1 jesus said do not let your hearts be troubled she trust those words underline i was praying for somebody to canada in this morning so i told them she is in anxiety in fear in total i don't know what total mess 
So I told her, start reading the Bible. And today I told her the exercise of David's Psalm you read and underline and, and claim these promises. Do not let your hearts be troubled. When you trust in God, trust also in me. Jesus assurance. So when we go through those things and underline it, by heart it, claim it, those words become a reality, a stronghold in you to overcome all the fear factors in your life. Psalm 23 verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are at my side with you, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. See, these are all not vain words at all. The people who are walking with the Lord enjoying this every day. It is not theory what we are preaching. At the age of 85, why should I preach a theory to you, which is, uh, nobody can be able to follow? I am telling you the truth, nothing but the truth, because the Lord has revealed those truth to me. Because even today I was praying, Lord, you speak. They are your people. I am only a servant. What do you want to speak? You speak. Because then he told me, see, give this. He gave me everything. He gave me, then I start writing yes, on Sunday. I start writing all that thing. Then he showed me all the things, how to go about it. So see the assurance and guarantee. I can see him so close. I can see the angel so close. It is all reality. It is not to tell somebody and bring them into a wrong belief. That enjoying the fellowship with Jesus. He, is, he wanted to be with you. He selected the disciples to be with him first and then send them out. He has selected everybody. When the world situation, he is in us now. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you, do not be afraid. These are all, Isaiah is the greatest of all prophets. <clears throat> you know, he has written everything, every prophecy, every word has come true, what he has written. And he, the revelation God, your God gave through uh, Isaiah, and he is writing, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand. How God is speaking? He is speaking through his prophets and says to you, Do not be fear, do not fear, do not fear. When we are in fear, he is there holding our hand and telling the same way, underline it, claim it. I will help you. What more you want when God's help is there? What more you want? Do not be afraid. He is there. I tell many people, he is never late. He is never early. He, at the nick of time, he is there. Don't fear. At the nick of time, he is there. Don't fear. Promise fulfilled. Numbers 23 verse 19. See, I have told you all these promises. We started with the promises. Trust the Lord that he will fulfill every promise. Now I am going to conclude it. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Go through it. Numbers 23 verse 19. Joshua chapter 23 verse 14. Joshua said, You know with all your heart and soul that none of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. See from the experience, after finishing everything, he is coming to the conclusion. Every promise has been fulfilled, not one has failed. Put your trust in Jesus the Lord. John chapter 14, once Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Claim the promises and enter into the promised land and rest. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 4. However, there should be no poor among you. See God's plan. God's plan. Believe. And he is assuring us. However, there should not be no poor among you. Poor in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The new way God is going to open you. He will make you rich. I am telling you. I am guaranteeing you. God is giving you to possess as your inheritance. He will richly bless you. He will richly bless you. 
the new avenue is opening in consultation, in prayer, in fasting, asking the Lord. In fasting, it is important. 40 days, uh, uh, that, uh, what is that, uh, Daniel fasting, I just got over. My father, family was very much worried. But the Lord showed me, fast for 40 days, Daniel. There is no question, Lord, when and how. I started on that same day, now it is over. No, when he is going to tell another fast, I do not know. But if he is telling me, I will follow. If only you fully obey the Lord your God and are care, careful to follow all these commands I am giving you today. For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised, promised you and will lead you to and lend to many nations but will borrow from none. You will rule over nations, but none will rule over you. Authority, promises, wealth, well-being, health, everything is promised by God. See, if you believe, see, people are not entering because they, because very good pious Catholics wanted to suffer. I am not responsible for that. But we believe in a good God who is my Abba, my father who paid the price so that I may be blessed. And that is why I started with uh, uh, John 10. I have come to give life, life in all his abundance. That is not only the wealth, all the areas it will cover. I believe in that word. So he blessed me with all that thing. Somebody wanted uh, to suffer, then it is for them to suffer. I am not responsible, but it is for each one to make a decision about themselves. Joshua chapter 21, four, verse 43. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sown to give them, give their forefathers. And they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest. See, Sabbath rest for the, for the righteous. Sabbath rest for the righteous. Sabbath rest for the righteous. Today I have prayed for so many old people. Absolutely miserable. They don't trust. They still trust people to so find a solution. Instead of that, trust the Lord. I am telling you, that's why I have taken particularly for over the people. The Lord gave them rest on every side. Just as he had shown to their forefathers, not one of their enemies withstood them. Every fight, no weapon forged against God's people will prevail. Don't worry about anything. God will fight the fight when you are sleeping. Lord, he will guard you, protect you, enable you. <clears throat> the Lord handed over all the enemies over to them. Not one of all the Lord's promises. See and underline. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. This is what is required. See, trust the Lord. I ask for guidance. Spend the time in prayer. Read the word of God, gain the promises. All those words become formless stones. It will, it will take you to the promised land. Blessed. Don't look at situations. Don't look at circumstances. Don't hear the things. But trust the Lord and believe in the word of God. And rest everything will go well for you. I know challenging times. I know many of our people are suffering. And much more people who are outside are suffering. But the God will give you the answer. Give you the answer. God is not sleeping. He never doses away. I gave you example. He is always alert. What is happening to a child of God is always alert. And he will bless you and set you free. And bless all the promises will be fulfilled. Claim the promises. This is his word. I told you, I gave you humble examples. If you have made a note of it, you can refer it back and ask the Lord through those words what the Lord is speaking to each one of you. Then claim those promises. And you will see that your promises are established. You will live a good life. Not only you live a live good life. Because you live the generation what I told you in the beginning itself will be blessed in every way. I make a short prayer for every, all, all of our people. <laughs> Loving and precious Jesus. Loving and precious Jesus. We thank you Lord for this time of worship. We see that the people who are hearing or monitoring or whatever it is, dwindling. Because I know they may be fighting that fight in the world. 
without coming to you to listen to the word which can take them across through difficult time challenges not the negative words not the things that they hear but trusting in the lord through the word of god proclaim believing trusting we pray for each and every family and all the people who are going to hear this word through internet or youtube or whatever it is that everyone when the word goes let each and every family may be blessed each and every person may be healed each and uh, we all their needs may be met from your abundance overflow lord because we trust in your holy word and your holy promise jesus you gave us this assurance you came with a clear agenda to give us a different life than what the world is offering to us in a, a life of abundance overflow rest peace victory joy uh, happiness abundance and overcoming power and fearlessness and boldness thank you for your promise thank you for the price you paid for us in calvary to establish your kingdom as we work for your kingdom oh lord let your people be blessed and let everyone here is may be healed and delivered and protected the holy and honorable name of jesus christ of nazareth united us when we make this prayer thank you and praise the lord amen